have two council members who were hearing via phone and I found they didn't want to be able to be in person, but they are here. We do have a full council meeting, though it doesn't look like it up here. Got their dreams, but they're all not right here. Last well, council member Craig, would you please have any questions? Five years, please. I will follow the come forward once again without giving the phone cards. Come before the Lord, say thank you for the things that you've done for us. Not only things that you've done for us, Lord, but the things that you're going to do for us. And Lord, as we gather here tonight to conduct the business of the city of West Columbia, keep it in our hearts and our minds that we must do what's best for all involved. These are more prayers that's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please join me in saying the pleasure, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So good to see everybody this evening, particularly former Mayor Bobby Gordon. He's in the back there. Y'all will please give Bobby a round of applause. So good to see you. Last time I saw him with the paste on the river to put on by our beautification foundation. Um, it was a tremendous success. Thank you for everybody who came out to support it. Thank you for all members who supported it. They raised almost sixteen thousand dollars that night for planning and beautification throughout the city of West Columbia. Um, so it was a tremendous success, and we thank you for your efforts. Um, tonight we're here. One of the things we're going to discuss is a annual budget proposed tax increase. Um, we've had one person who has requested to speak. Um, currently, the budget considerations are at the end of the agenda, towards the end of the agenda. Like I said, we do have two council members who are here via telephone. And for that reason, we want to make sure they don't get dropped off before that important vote. We want to make sure everybody can participate. At this time, I'm going to make a motion or request a motion on council is going to do it to reorder the agenda to allow Ms. Karen DeBose to come up and speak at the first part of the council meeting and then for us to immediately go into the budget consideration. Is there such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, if you're in favor, please raise your hand. Councilmember Green? Aye. Councilmember Hallman? Aye. The matter passes unanimously to reorder the agenda. Uh, Mrs. DeBose, are you here? I'm here. Uh, <laughs> if you could come on up for me. Okay. <laughs> good to see you this evening. Good to see you too. Well, not really, but. <laughs> 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 not, not under these circumstances. Okay. Hey. There you guys. If you don't mind, just say your name and your address for the record. Oh, well, Karen DeBose, 3152, Cimarron Trail, West Columbia. Go ahead, man. Yep. And I'll tell you, if you would, I'm going to ask if you would keep your remarks less than five minutes. Okay, great. So I'm here today, uh, Mayor and Council, and the good citizens of West Columbia to ask you that you not vote for a property tax increase in light. I'm a little nervous for some reason. I feel this nice. <laughs> feel free to take it off if you no, want. No, I know, yeah, I guess I should pull it down a little bit. Um, in light of the current economic situation that we're in, in this country and the world, really, and um, with everything on the increase, inflation, record gas, food, goods, service, increasing daily with no end in sight. Our interest rates <clears throat> are on the increase and recession is knocking at our door. I ask you not to vote for another property tax increase in the city. To please use the money that you already have, your surplus, your multiple revenue streams, your increase in municipality funding from the state, um, and all other monies that I'm not mentioning here that I'm sure uh, the, the uh, city has 
to please learn to manage your money better like the good citizens of this city does, including the businesses. And I know the businesses have a way of sending that money on down to their customers, but eventually there's going to be a breaking point and nobody's going to be able to afford anything. And so you're just further bringing citizens um, who are on fixed incomes in the city, whether they're on social security, whether they just have a job with no increases in their pay and no bonuses. And I ask for you to look out for the least of these in the city. I know you guys probably don't see those when you're making up your budgets, but they are out there. And just because people are not standing up and saying so, they will go to the polls to vote. And so I ask you to please consider us when you do ask for these property tax increase and how it is burdening the people of this good city in light of everything that we're going through with this economy. Um, and I know, you know, there's a needs list and there's a wish list. You know, I understand the city has needs, that's understandable, but you need to take that wish list in this day and time and put it aside. And I spoke with Katrina Shealy and I spoke with Mike Cassidy, and they both agreed that you should not be raising taxes in this economy, and they don't believe in raising property taxes anyway. And they would be willing to help you manage the city better so you don't have to keep coming back to the good citizens of this state of this city to ask us for another property tax increase. Um, you're building everywhere. If you drove around the city of West Columbia lately, I mean, it is a buzz with people coming here to spend money to go, uh, you know, to your restaurants. Um, we already pay property taxes in West Columbia. We pay them in Lexington County. Everything is on the increase, and an additional 30, 60, whatever dollars at the end of the year on our property taxes, you know, puts a burden on us as property owners. And we don't need it. And especially in this day and time, I consider it being tone deaf that you would come back to the citizens of this city and ask for more money. I just think it's tone deaf. Even if you needed it, this is not the right time to do that. And we would really appreciate you considering that um, when you work on your budgets. Um, the city already has, like I said, over, you know, all the revenue. You're getting $12 million in COVID relief funds. I understand, you know, that, that money can only be used for certain things, but you can certainly dial your flower and graph around a little bit and take into consideration that big lump sum of money. Um, to help with your wish list, you know, and I think it's great that you're getting that. That's all fine and dandy. I have no, I don't really care how you spend the money. As long as you don't keep coming back to me as a citizen of the city, asking for more property tax money. You know, eventually we're going to be property tax out of homes, and we're not going to let that happen. Nobody's going to let it happen. Um, you know, and I know that there's bonds and grants and interest on money. You already have surplus money in the city. Um, you want to give bonuses and raises, I appreciate that. I don't get bonuses and I don't get raises. Um, and, you know, and, and I'm sorry if anybody's listening here that, that's on that bonus, you know, or, you know, you want to get other raises. I mean, you know, this economy, if you're coming back to us for more money, then I say, that's a no go. Um, you know, maybe the large, your large businesses like Nephron, Amazon, franchises. Maybe you can go to them and sit down with them and say, you know, this is what I would like to do in the city. Can you guys help fund some of this so we don't have to go back to the hardworking people of West Columbia and ask for more property tax increase? You know, there's always different ways you can, you can get around this. And there's lots of people that are willing to help you lay out better plans for your money to still get what you want but quit coming back to the property owner. The city of West Columbia, or the city of Columbia is gonna increase their property taxes, but only on the renters, not the renters, but only on secondary homes in the city, but I'm going back to primary residence. Spoke with the town of Irmo, those folks up there, he does not even, they do not even um, assess a, a city property tax in the town of Irmo. I think hold on, be, hold I think on. Be comments with the time is over. Oh, it is, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate, I appreciate your time and everything, so thank you. Thank you for your consideration.
move into item 8.4. Agenda has been amended. We'll take up second reading consideration of an ordinance adopting a budget for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2022, and levying a tax in each such a budget for the fiscal year. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Sorry. Is there any discussion? Here, go ahead. Mr. Green, do you know that the Cattle Lakes take charge of the sanitation to pick up trash? I got you. So you don't know that those tax dollars will pay for the same services that we provide. The city of West They do not charge. I spoke with the town administrator. They do not charge for those services. It is part of what they charge for the city tax. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Hearing that for the discussion, we'll no, I actually did want to say something. So, the residents um, in my district did call me, they asked me to come speak out about the smelling increase, and I just kind of want to point out some of the macroeconomic data. The savings rates are collapsing, we have retail sales falling, consumer confidence is at all time record low, personal wealth and stocks is evaporating, credit card spending is at a record high. GDP for the first quarter was at negative 1.5. Atlanta Fed just revised down Q2 to zero. It hasn't come in yet, but when it is, um, I expect that the Fed doesn't want to face what we already know as consumers, which we are in a recession. Um, CPI increased year over year. Core CPI is 9.7. And you know, inflation has really found its resting place in consumer prices. It's given everyone a huge pay cut. And West Columbia is working class. You know, we don't have it. We don't have any slush in our budgets to fund expanded city operating costs and payroll. And I just don't believe that the recession is the right time to do a millage increase. Anyone else? A couple points I'll add to that. I don't think I've got as many phone calls on this one issue as I have since probably I first was on council about the Brooklyn project. Um, I've of those calls I received, one person said maybe, could be, possibly, it was a good idea to raise taxes. And that was probably out of 40 to 50 calls. Um, I, I just don't think now is the right time to do it. That was the majority of the calls. Now is just not the right time to do it. Um, so I hope that everybody will take that into consideration. And I will um, encourage us to send this budget back to find the ways to fund some of this, but not all of it. I think there's ways to do it, but I think we need to send this back and see what we can get um, done and get the positions that are key filled, but leave some of the other stuff out. Anyone else? Hearing no further comment at this time, we'll move for a vote. If you're in favor, please raise your hand.
Councilmember Green? Nay. Councilmember Hall? Madam passes five to four. If you would be voted against, please identify yourself. The council member Green will list you amongst the names. Thank you. Thank you. Moving back up to item six point one at this time. Presentation concerning amendment to the zoning ordinance. We'll hear from Mr. Wayne Schultz. Thank you, Mayor Council. We're going to remember that in the budget, but we'll probably do that. We'll remember that. And you can stay as long as you like, and please stay quiet. Well, there you go. You heard it. Go ahead, sir. Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, just wanted to bring a couple of things to your attention. Um, Planning Commission will be considering some zoning amendments, so I want to make you aware of it before. Uh, before it comes to first reading. Um, first minute I want to talk about is um, to allow for rental and leasing services in certain districts and specifically what came up was a request to have bi uh, bicycle uh, rental within the overlay district. Now we could accommodate it as part of a uh, retail bike shop but they had to list themselves the bike rental part as a separate business so we wanted to be able to accommodate that. So we'll bring them some chief's recommendations regarding that. The second one is to allow for night watchmen at certain commercial activities within the commercial and in the manufacturing zones. This would be for an employee who would be able to live on the property overnight and provide security um, for certain activities, certain commercial and industrial activities. So we'll bring that to you. Um, the third one is um, to address an issue with sports and recreational instruction. Um, this came to our attention specifically with things like karate. Um, training, karate instruction, so we want to, to address that. And the fourth one is to um, add back into the district, uh, the light manufacturing district, the, the modifier of light for manufacturing industrial activities to make sure that they're clear that uh, and within the light manufacturing districts, those uh, industrial and manufacturing uses have to be of a light and so characteristic, which is defined in the order. So, Planning Commission, all the public hearing on those items, and we'll bring them to you in, in, in July. Thank you. Anyone have any comments? Wayne, well, on the first one with bikes, yes, sir. you said it would only be in the overlay district, correct? Yeah. Well, so the bike rental, we'll, so we, we will be able to tailor the next code to um, pull out specific rental activities. So, for example, in the gateway overlay district, we'll be looking to just for bike rental, say, versus car rental, and that type of thing. So we're going to try to be very cognizant of the certain uses within the gateway of the legislature for, for rental leasing. And going to, and this will go to the next one, why don't we do that for the whole city? But you know, we certainly can. I mean, that, that's certainly, the, the, again, the, the reason it was brought to our attention is because in this situation, bike rental, and the, the, there was an activity, there was a business one open in the gateway of the district for bike rental. And we currently don't accommodate that specific use. Uh, we talked to them about trying to put it under their retail license because they're going to be a bike shop and they have to be listed separately. So we certainly can look at that if that's a, if that's a desire of council. Absolutely. I wish we would take that overlay district away and just do everything for the whole city. I mean, why not do everything for the whole city? And I think we're at a point where as we expand out, as we expand in different directions, we need to make something citywide instead of focusing on one small area and look for the whole city. If it's humanly possible. Okay, I know sometimes it's not, but if it's, if it's humanly possible to do it, I think it would be great to see those type of activities expanding, especially if we have bike lanes and do things like that in other parts of the city. Yeah, that'd be good to see. No, absolutely. So we would allow we would allow for we would allow for bike rental in other parts of the city. We would just be restrictive in, in the type of retail, I mean, type of rental and leasing within the gateway over the district. But the bike rental would be available in other parts of the city as well. Um, we would just try to limit us the sphere of rental and leasing activities within the gateway over the district. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I, I wasn't very clear about that. Anyone else? Thank you. Yes, sir. Moving down to item 6.2, the discussion of the sign ordinance and mural approval process. Mr. Chief. 
Yes, sir. Thank you. So I was asked to um, present to council our process for currently our process for reviewing um, murals within the city. Um, mural and murals, um, the, those specific words, um, the word mural is, is listed one time within the zoning code, and the word murals is listed four times. And all those are within section 617.3 um, and 0.4. 617.3 says the provision of the section, and 617 is the um, paint color standards that we have within the city. So with certain, uh, the, within uh, commercial and, and industrial activities, there are certain um, um, paint, there are paint, code standard, paint color standards for exterior walls with, within the commercial and industrial districts. And, but 617.3 um, excludes murals from those standards. So 617.3 reads, the provisions of this section shall not apply to murals. However, any and all murals within the city limits must be presented to the zoning administrator. Pursuant to Article 10, Sections 1001 and 1002, any mural existing at the effective date of the section must be permitted within one year from the effective date of the section. And then 617.4 talks about any existing mural at the time the ordinance was adopted to have one year to submit a permit. So, so, so 617 point really is the standard for how we review murals. And then 1001 and 1002, uh, those are the code, the sections just specifically talk about a zoning permit, 1001 describes what a zoning permit is, is, and then 1002 says that all work done within the city must have a zoning compliance application on file. So what we do is when we get a mural request in for any private commission mural, and also public commission mural, but there, that's a little bit different process. Um, for a private commission mural, they submit a zoning compliance application and a sketch to the city. We look at that at the staff level to make sure that it is not a violation of our sign checker. And then, um, and then they issue the permit, we issue the permit uh, after reviewing the sketch to make sure that, that there were no violations regarding the sign. Um, and then we evaluate the, the work after it's done to make sure it's compliant with what was initially submitted. So that's our current process for evaluating murals um, that are commissioned within the city. Um, now, you know, obviously we're getting a little more interest in having murals in place. And there are things that we can look at to enhance that process. Um, if we can, if there's a, a, a standard that talks about time, place, and manner. Those are the generally the, the things we can regulate in terms of um, science and, and, and in this case, art projects. So we can talk about you know, areas within the city that murals can be permitted or not permitted. So for example, the maybe a specific interest in, in, in the gateway of the district or not having another gateway over the district or within certain corridors or within certain commercial districts. So we can look at those possibilities. We can also talk about what specific walls on a building can have a mural, whether it's a, you know, whether it faces a parking lot or it faces the street, or those types of things as well. Um, we can look at um, the size of the permit, how how large it, how large it can be within the wall itself, or if, if um, or how tall it can be. Those types of things, uh, and then certainly having a permit process in place, making sure that the property owner has reviewed the the, the, the sketch. Um, those are types of things we can look at in, in terms of actually putting within the code so that there is a, a clear process in place for following for our applicants to follow. Do you have any questions? So I'll address the one that was just done on 378. Whether it's advertising or not, it's done for a business called Planet Vapor. Um, I would like to get some background on where we thought an astronaut on a wall in the middle of West Columbia, where I don't think it looks that bad. Where was the process on that? If you can kind of give us a little bit of background. So we were reached out. We were reached out um, by um, by the artist on, on the process for um, submitting a mural, and we, we we discussed the same process: do a zoning compliance application and submit a sketch, which they've done, which they did. Um, and it was evaluated internally, make sure that there was not any conflict with our sign code in terms of in, in, in commercial content. Did not see any, any obvious commercial content at the time the sketch was provided to us. Um, now, as my understanding, after the work done today, there may be some issues we need to look at, and we will do, do that you know, subsequent to this meeting. 
But at that time, there was, you know, they, they did go through the process, they submitted the sketch, and did not see any obvious conflicts with our signed code. And, and so the permit was issued specifically saying there cannot be any commercial content as part of the, as part of the mural. Did the owner of the shopping center submit it, or did just a business or an artist? I guess that's where I'm trying to find out. Did the owner do it for right. the shopping center? Yeah, so the, the artist submitted the application, but we did contact the property owner to make sure that they had seen the sketch, and they did confirm they had seen the sketch. And my concern on it is not what's up there. I still don't know how that fits in what's going on here. I'm sure there's a way we can make it, but it's the fact that I feel like that is an offshoot of advertising for the Vegas shop. And we're doing it right next to a, a karate studio that houses two to three hundred kids a day during the school year and summer that are seeing that. And I think that that's, I don't know if we can definitely say it's promoted or not promoted, but I do, I do think that. There needs to be a little more guidelines we can put some things in place. Nothing against murals, nothing against that. Um, I think it actually, I did not see it today. I, I haven't had a chance to get behind it today. Um, what I saw yesterday was better than I thought it was going to be. Maybe it's changed today and it's not. Um, I'll, I'll look at it on the way home. But I, I, I just really feel like that that's very, very, very close connection to, to it being a major shop. And I think. I worry now when we've opened our doors for other businesses to come to us and say, hey, look, put my logo, put some, here's something similar to what I do. I want it on the side of my building. And I won't even go down the roads. I think it could go down and get to it, but it could it may create some problems. That's why I want to make sure, hopefully, we, we don't, this one may be fine. We may be able to keep it, but maybe going down the road, we can have a, a standard in place. We will bring something back to council for consideration. Thank you. Yes, sir. As a council member, I had a conversation about this and it brought up this um, 2018 vision session where we talked about doing portal overlays on um, 378 and Highway 1. Um, I don't know that we've really got recommendations back on that, but. Well, I, I, will, I will make sure that's a trust actually. Yes, I look forward to you getting this additional help here zoning so you can. Hopefully, you fill these requests because council members have voted against funding. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. It has nothing to do with voting against funding. It has to do with the fact that we give absolutely nothing outside of the river in the city at this point in time. And there is nothing being done. They're saying this isn't a knock on anybody, but we have outside of trash service, after we pass I 26, we get very, very little done. And that's a problem. And that's when you're asking that area to be taxed more now, we deserve more than that. Anyone else? Uh, Mayor, I have a question. Yeah. Um, Why did you hear his question? No, sorry, he, he liked that who on staff approved this particular deal. So, um, so uh, the, the request came in while I was away. So Joel, Joel McAvoy was the one to sign off on it. He put the conditions in, but he did, um, he did have a, he, he reviewed it with, with, uh, with uh, Tara and Michelle before the final action was taken on. Wayne, I have a question. What, what were the conditions that were put in? Um, I don't. I don't remember other than specifically say that you cannot have any commercial content. Okay. So, another question for me, what is the maximum size sign that it has for a commercial Right, for a sign, um, the, so the way our ordinance is written, um, a business starts with 150 square feet, a property starts with 150 square feet. Now, it's, it, there's a slightly different calculation for multi-tenant operations, like a shopping center, where um, it's 50 square feet for each subsequent tenant. Um, so in, in general terms, it's 50 square feet for a shopping center tenant, uh, unless the developer has reallocated that for, uh, in other ways. So, but in general terms, it's for a multi-tenant um, occupant, it's 50 square feet.
Right. So at this point, there are no restrictions on the location of the bureaus in the city. Correct. We 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 stress we stress to the um, to the artist or whoever the applicant is that they did not have any commercial content. Correct. So the, the the sketch that was provided did not appear to have any commercial content. But it's my understanding there may be some as part of a, as part of the work done today, which we're going to evaluate after. Um, I haven't seen it today. What, what work was done? Um, so I think he's finished it up, but I think he has a hashtag uh, that references the business on it. At that point in time, we asked him, to, would we ask him to paint over the whole thing? I'm sorry? If that's the case, would we ask them to paint over the whole thing? Yeah, so that's 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 what we're gonna that's what we're gonna try to do. I mean, I'm gonna know that if that's what it is, we can see as a city we can we can physically view it and say. This was an attempt to do advertising. Whether it's hashtag is gone, whether it's not. My other concern about it, I've expressed this to a couple of council members is I mean, he signed it or did whatever. It looked, I hate to say it looks more like a tag to me. But we might have other groups coming along now, tagging it right alongside it. I mean, those are concerns I have about it. And it, it I think there was a bet. I think that's a great, I think that is the perfect place for a mural on 378. I just don't know that. Way it was done is the perfect way I have it done. So sure. that's that's my point. I think there could have been a better way, hopefully. But I think if you hashtag it, then hopefully, and then it's not our decision to make. But I hope that it's a clear indication we were advertising. Before I tell a private business owner, or property owner, that they can't have what they want to put on their building because I don't like it and I find it artistically unpleasing, I'd rather set a clear standard that says you can't have yours. Who, who am I to say what somebody wants on their individual property outside of restricted commercial content, which I, which I get, and I certainly get that. If you make it a sign, it's a sign, right? Yes. But for us to say that one mural has more value or is better than another mural and take away a private property on the right and have it, I don't know what gives us the right or authority to do that. And that, that leads to something else. Um, what you're saying, Tim, and I agree with uh, what you're saying. It's kind of hard to regulate artistic expression and stuff. If you're in a society that's got free speech, yeah. um, but I've been to, I've visited a lot of really remarkable neighborhoods and cities, and every single one of them has murals. And in every single one of them, there were some murals that I liked and some murals that I disliked. But I think that if we had more murals, um, I think it would take a lot of ugly concrete block walls and lot line walls and things that are very unremarkable and make them points of interest very easily. And there's probably certain standards that we could put on how murals go where that would that would uh, kind of maximize the good uh, for murals. But um, I, I think it's very, very difficult to regulate artistic content and I think that artistic content is both good. I think it's constitutionally problematic that slippery slope on the Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no one's moving out of item 8.1, second reading consideration of the planning commission recommendation to approve the text amendment to the city of West Columbia zoning board regarding Convention centers and conference centers. Is there a motion? I move. Is there a second? No. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Schuh is coming back. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, sir, I'm, I'm not aware of any unintended consequences. I, 
I'm, I'm not aware of anything. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Hearing no further comments, if you're in favor, please raise your hand. Councilmember Green? Uh, Councilmember Hallman? I think she, she just texted me. She has left. So please turn to the record. She's not on the record. No, she had this. Matter of passage, she had this. Moving down to item 8.2. Second reading consideration of planning commission's recommendation to establish the only classification of C2 general commercial for one parcel totaling 5.22 acres at 30096 Sunset Boulevard, tax map number 004535-05-006. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none at this time, if you're in favor, please raise your hand. Mr. Green? Aye. Pass unanimous. Moving down to item 8.3, second reading consideration of the Planning Commission's recommendation to approve the rezoning of three parcels totaling 0.5 acres at 529 Center Street and 201 Herman Street and 203 Herman Street. <laughs> Tax map numbers 